All right. Hello again. I think we're going to be all good to go. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Steve McPhail. Um, I'm a director, teacher, and founder of OET Online. Uh, this is our prep hour number nine, and we're going to focus on listening part C. So I hope you've got your ears ready um, as we go through this aspect of the test. Now, let's just find out where everyone is and what time it is, and, and perhaps a weather report. I'm here in Brisbane. It's 3 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. Uh, been a little bit chilly. Winter has arrived here, um, but it has been a sunny day. Everyone, if you could type in where you're located, and so I can check up on that on the screen. Okay, I'm not getting that up on the screen at the moment. Just a sec. Let's see if I can get some assistance to get that up. I can't see the comments. Oh, that's, that's it. Right. Okay, so we got here they come. So we got, all right, it's all good. Bit panicky here, guys, in the live session. Hello to Reka, it's 10.35 in India. Good morning in India. Hello to Alice in the Philippines, where it's one o'clock and very sunny, good to hear. Uh, we've got Dai in Hanoi in Vietnam, where it's a great range of countries um, across the um, Asian region. Um, hello to Joseph in Ireland in Dublin, must be early in the morning for you. Um, welcome, torrid weather, hot weather in India, or well, good luck with that, Ray Carr. Uh, hello to Arj over there in um, Arabia. Jishna just down the road from me on the Gold Coast. Hello to Saima, 8, 8 a.m. in Saudi. Thanks for getting up early. Um, hello to Mary as well in Saudi. Good to see a few Saudi people here. Happy Eid, everyone. Um, Allah also in Saudi. Well done. And hello to Tien in... Melbourne. Excellent, excellent. Keep on typing in where you're from, everyone. We're all on the same, um, same goal of getting you guys to pass OET. There's a few familiar faces I can see there as well. Hello to Fahad. Hello to any regulars from our OET online classes. Okay. We're ready to get started. So we're going to do listening part C, everyone. Uh, we've also got Carla there in Libya on a sunny day. Great. Um, Charm in Manila. All right. Wonderful to see a good um, crowd and range of countries. Now I'm going to, I'm going to get a bit smaller on the screen and I'm going to bring up my PowerPoint. Uh, and we're, this is what we're going to use for our audio. So what we'll do today, we're going to practice listing part C, as you can see there. Uh, we'll go through a few of the strategies first. We'll just have a bit of a review of it. Um, and then we're going to listen live and we'll set up a little poll um, where we'll get you guys to select your answers on what you think is the right choice. And then we'll have a bit of a discussion and analysis um, looking at the tape scripts for um, that part of the test. All right, so let's begin everyone. So what is listing part C? Well, um, the listing has three parts as everyone knows. Uh, part A, which is uh, two tasks, communication between, you listen to uh, communication between a health professional and a patient. Then part B has um, six short extracts um, uh, with three multiple choice questions. And then part C, you hear two presentations um, on healthcare topics. Each presentation will be five minutes long, right? I'm sure you're aware of that. Uh, what type of, uh, what, what types of communication will you hear in part C? Well, 
it'll either be an interview with a health professional on a health related topic so that's an interview that means that there's an interviewer asking questions um, and the health professional is responding uh, in those types of tasks it's quite good because you get a clear structure so for every question the interviewer asks there's one response and that response relates to one of the questions so it's quite easy to follow uh, a second type is when you're listening to a lecture or presentation on a health related topic and there are no questions um, and just very minor pauses so you have to be very alert um, as to when the topic moves forward for that type of task and that's what we're going to be listening to today actually so we'll develop some strategies to help you with that um, there are six multiple choice questions per extract and three answer choices um, so let's have a bit of a um, further look at that so the core skills well um, you're going to have to listen to that main idea of the communication to try to work out what what message is being um, sent by the speaker and try to grasp that main idea or it could be the purpose that the communication could be for a particular purpose whether it's providing education or examples or something like that and the speaker may also have an opinion on the topic which isn't said directly but can be inferred by what the speaker is saying that means you've got to dig a little bit deeper so that's what the task is requiring you to do um, in terms of the exam itself you get 90 seconds pre-listening so on exam day you'll see your six questions and you'll have 90 seconds to go through those questions it's not very long 90 seconds that'll be a fairly quick exercise of trying to read the question stem carefully so you can understand that so the question stem is the sentence above the multiple choice questions a b and c so that's very important the question stem and then you'll look at the answer choices uh, for many of you you won't have time to read them in full or to reflect on them because there's not enough time you'll just briefly go through underline a few key words so that you can refer to them after so that's what you do in the 90 seconds then uh, the audio will start and while you listen this is where a few skills come into play you're going to try to focus on that main idea of communication um, you'll be listening out for certain signal words however but therefore as a result for that reason and so forth things that signify that something important is coming or making the relationships between ideas clear you listen out for those words because uh, that can guide you to the right answer uh, you'll also hear lots of um, synonyms the language used in the audio won't necessarily be the same as the text but the meaning um, will align so you be, look be on the lookout for synonyms uh, a useful strategy that you may consider is take notes as you listen personally I find that quite useful it focuses my um, listening so if you're good at note taking you can make a few notes that can help you stay on track and follow what the speaker is saying um, as you listen you do need to be reading the answer choices as well so you're sort of multitasking there you're reading and listening at the same time that's an important skill to develop uh, you may be able to rule out incorrect answers as you listen that's quite good as well and then finally check um, select the correct answer so lots of things going on with a multiple choice question it's not listening only it's also being able to follow and read read and listen at the same time and make decisions all right um, you're welcome to put in any questions as you go along any questions so far is that all clear
All right, just welcome to type in any questions that you may have. So what we're going to listen to today, um, we're going to, it's this image you can see, you can see a doctor here talking to a patient. And the actual topic here uh, is given to us, just like it will be on exam day. And it says, you hear a hospital doctor called Dr. Keith Gardner giving a presentation about some research he's done on staff patient communication. So there's the key word to everyone. We're going to listen um, to a topic on staff patient communication. Okay, we can see our staff member. This will be the doctor. And here's an elderly gentleman. Um, this is the patient. Okay, so uh, is this a familiar topic for everyone? It's not so much about a medical topic, this one, is it? This topic's about medical communication, all right? Medical communication. Okay, so now we have our, uh, whoops, I'll just go back one. So what we're going to do now is have a discussion, everyone, and I'd love to get you involved. <laughs> Chris says, what does it mean, tune in to the conversation? Tune in means listen and focus. Good question, Chris. Alice says, we noticed that in part C, there are always two choices which are almost identical to each other. Is that right or it just so happens? Um, I think it's case by case there, Alice. I think sometimes you might see answer choices which are similar. Um, but in this particular example, I've noticed actually the answer choices are quite different, quite different. But as you do read through the question and answer choices, you may be able to form some thoughts or ideas um, on what you feel is a logical answer choice. Um, but the bottom line is it's not so easy to predict. You're only given 90 seconds to go through the answer choices. So the best way to make your decision about what's right or wrong is obviously after listening. But let's begin with our pre-reading. And I'm going to underline a few words here, everyone. So you're looking at this screen. So the question, Dr. Gardner first became interested in staff communication. So for me, that's a really typical question that you'll see in the listening Part C test, and we've got the word first. So initially, what was the initial, what led to his initial interest? Maybe not the secondary interest, but the initial interest. So always underline words like that. Why did he first become interested? And then there's three reasons. Uh, experiencing poor communication as an inpatient. That means he was a patient and he experienced it or he observed the effects of poor communication on a patient, an observation, or he, or after analyzing patient feedback on the subject. So there's three possible things which could have triggered his interest. So just like I've demonstrated there, quite quickly just go through and underline keywords is what you should be doing in that 90 seconds. Uh, question two, what point does Dr. Gardner make about a typical admission? So we're listening for a typical admission here. That's our key word. Um, one thing I can tell you about uh, this type of um, lecture topic, um, when they change, when they transition from question to question, the speaker will mention words like typical admission. You'll hear that. And that will be your signal that we've moved on from question one to question two. So you do need to be reading um, and, um, and listening at the same time to follow the thread. Okay, what point? Information can, the information can overwhelm the patient. Patients feel unable to communicate effectively. Filling in detail paperwork can be stressful. So filling in paperwork can be stressful. So I'm just underlining the keywords, giving everyone an idea. Question three, Dr. Gardner uses an example. This is an interesting question, everyone. 
doctor uses an, as an example of poor communication to illustrate the point that. So this one, we're going to hear an example, obviously, of poor communication. And then he's illustrating or demonstrating something. Um, and why is he doing that? Well, is it A, patient should, should be consulted about desirability of a hospital stay, whether they should have one or not? Or is it that specialists need to be informed that if there are mental health issues or relative knowledge of patient's condition shouldn't be taken for granted? So this is an interesting question. Question A talks about the patients. B, answer choice B, talks about the specialists. And C talks about the relative's knowledge. So three, whoops. So three different subjects there, everyone. Three different subjects. So all very different there. Let's continue, everyone, before we listen. Question four. Dr. Gardner explains, let's have, get my pen. Dr. Gardner explains that a survey conducted uh, among inpatients about communication, A, measured the difference between expectation and actual experience, asked opinions about all, watch, always watch out for this word, all aspects of the service, as opposed to some, uh, included questions on how frequently they visited hospital. So we've got three choices there. We're going to need to read and listen together. Question five is about a common complaint one common complaint from the survey. Is it a lack of privacy, overuse of unclear medical terminology, or a tendency not to address patients in respectful way? So is it, is it about showing respect? Is it about the use of medical terminology? Or is it about a privacy issue? So you've got three main topics there, privacy, unclear medical terminology and respect. So that's one of the things trying to identify. One of these is a concern. We have to listen for that. And then we've got question six. How does Dr. Gardner feel about the results? So he's, we're looking for his feeling. Is he surprised by one response? Is he reassured? by the level of care identified? Or is he worried about unforeseen problems? So here, we've got three adjectives describing his feeling. Is he surprised? Is he reassured? Or is he worried? It's going to be one of those. So you can see patterns in the way that questions are developed. Um, so that's what you do in your 90 seconds, everyone. It'll be pretty fast, I can tell you that. Okay, now it's our chance to listen. So we've got question one here, everyone. And what I want you to do, you can see the question there. Um, you might want to have a piece of paper there and get ready to write down the answer. I'm going to play the audio. It's going to go, we're going to do one question at a time. Each will be about 90 seconds long. No, maybe less than that, about 45 seconds long. Um, roughly speaking, about 45 seconds long. I'll play it, and then I'm going to ask you to complete the poll and select your right answer choice. So type in R if you're ready. Type in R if you're ready. Good, Arun is ready, Alice is ready, everyone's ready, good, good, good. So you're tuning in everyone, tuning in your ear. Here we go, I'm gonna play it, have a listen. Good morning, my name is Dr. Keith Gardner and I'd like to talk to you today about some research I've been involved in concerning something that affects all health professionals, staff-patient communication. 
Now, firstly, let me reassure you that in feedback, patients seem positive about the way information is communicated to them. But I recently decided to explore the issue in more detail when I was in a hospital with a patient and witnessed for myself what can result when a healthcare professional assumes they've made themselves clear to a patient, when in fact they've been anything but. Luckily, I've had very few complaints made against members of my team, but the potential is certainly there. Okay, everyone, we've heard that. Now, I've put a poll up there, and now just select your answer there. What do you think the answer is? A, B, or C? Dr. Gardner first became interested in staff patient communication after A, experiencing poor communication as an inpatient, B, observing the effects of poor communication on a patient, or C, analyzing patient feedback on the subject of communication. Polls, quite interesting there. We have 50%, um, uh, so B is trending strong at around 50%. C is quite strong about 36%, and we've got A at about 14%. So not many of you like A. I can see that there. All right, well, let's see what it is, everyone. 50% went for B, 36% were attracted to C. All right, the answer was B. Well done, everyone. 50% of you got it right, and um, we're just over 50%. But about 40% had difficulty. So why is the answer B? Well, let's just have a look at the transcripts, everyone. I'll jump through to the main paragraph. Uh, Dr. Gardner said now, he said, now firstly, let me reassure you that in feedback, patients seem positive about the way information is communicated. Now this is a key word, everyone, but, but signal word. After but, something very important was said, but I recently, did decide, I recently decided to explore the issue in more detail. That means he's interested in it. When I was in a hospital with a patient and witnessed for myself what can result when a healthcare professional assumes they've made themselves clear to a patient when in fact they've done anything but, in, that means they haven't made this themselves clear. So witness for myself, that means he observed the effects. That's our answer, everyone. And C, analyzing patient feedback data. Well, um, it doesn't say here, he did say he read the feedback and it seemed positive, right? He did say that. Let me reassure you it's positive. But this isn't what triggered his interest. So it comes after that sentence. So there's a bit of a trap there for C. That's why I think a lot of people chose it because he used the word firstly, but that his first was a reassurance. The patient feedback is positive, but then he explored the issue, the issue of patient communication, um, staff patient communication in more detail when he witnessed that problem. Is that clear everyone? Answer choice is B, and 50% of you got that. All right, good job. Let's continue, everyone. Try question two. Turn off my audio. We'll do another poll here. What point does Dr. Gardner make about a typical admission to hospital? You can read that yourself on the screen. Let's play it. So first, let's start by looking at a typical hospital admission for an inpatient and the first communication they have about any procedures they are to undergo. On arrival, a patient will complete necessary paperwork. Various staff will talk to them about their treatment during their stay, which is designed to reduce patient anxiety. However, from some patient's point of view, this interaction can seem very complex and difficult to take in, especially at a time when they're not at their best physically or mentally. 
so it's doubly important to check that any communication has been understood. Okay. A couple of people have gone in early. So all answers A, B, and C are trending very closely now. B is leading the way with 45% at the moment. A on 30%. C on 21%. So B is winning, okay. A is fighting back now. A is, wow, they're all even Stephen, as they say, just like my name, even Stephen. They're all trending in the mid-30s. Few more answers coming through. Okay, so we ended up with roughly about 33%. Well, all pretty even, but B and C the most, um, followed by C, but followed by A. A got the least responses, only 25%. But in fact, the answer is A, everyone. So only a quarter of you got this right. So why? Why was this hard? Well, I'll show you. Let, let's read through the script, everyone. The question, what point does Dr. Gardner make about a typical admission? Well, he says, let's start looking at some typical hospital admissions. Now, watch this point, everyone. We know we're on question two because we... the Dr. Gardner says these words and we see it in the questions. That's very important for you. That's how you know when you've gone, one question has ended and a new one has started. So you do, it is very important that you read the question stems while listening. So you, otherwise, if you don't, you could easily get lost. And you might be listening to question two, trying to answer question two, but the speaker's talking about question three, which means you probably get both wrong. So you have to watch out for that. Now, what did he say? Let's, let's start by looking at hospital, typical hospital admission for an inpatient and the first, communica first communication they have about any procedure they are to undergo. On arrival, a patient will complete paperwork. Um, now, a lot of people went C really early, I saw, and they mentioned paperwork. But it doesn't say anything about that being stressful. They just do it. Various staff will talk to them about their treatment during their stay, which is designed to reduce anxiety. So A, C is wrong. It's nothing mentioned about that paperwork causing stress. Then it says, however, from some patient's point of view, this interaction can be very complex and difficult to take in. So interaction means the interaction with the staff, right? And, and it, part of that is filling the paperwork, but it's the whole interaction of the admission can be very complex and difficult to take in. So that relates to A, everyone. And do you know this word? overwhelm. The information given can overwhelm the patient. So this is a synonym, everyone. If something's complex or difficult to take in, we feel overwhelmed. We can't deal with it. Is that clear, everyone? And it says, especially at a time when they, when they are not at their best physically or mentally because they've got other stuff going on. Um, a little hint, everyone, when you see big words like this, overwhelm, take the time to consider the meaning. Sometimes like words like overwhelm, complex words, could indicate that it's, a possibly, it's possibly a correct answer. All right. Um, any comments? Just add them now. Any comments?
Yes, well done, Alice. Difficult to take in means overwhelm. And I see a lot of people actually typed in the answer C there. All right, all right. Let's continue. Let's do another one, everyone. Let's do another one. So we've got question three, everyone. I'll just bring up the poll for you. Just a moment. Okay, I'm going to play it. I'm sure you're all ready. Question three. Dr. Gardner uses an example of poor communication to illustrate the point that What's he illustrating? A, B, or C, everyone. Now, to illustrate what I'm talking about, let's take a hypothetical situation. I often use this because it highlights the potential consequences of poor communication. A man in his 80s is admitted to hospital, despite his protestations, with ongoing severe back pain. On investigation, it's found his cancer has spread. The outlook is poor, and further compounded by his becoming depressed and refusing to eat while in hospital. A feeding tube is inserted, a procedure which the patient complies with, but which his family members query. The doctor on duty updates them, assuming they're aware of the severity of the patient's condition, when in fact no such prognosis has been shared with them. An extreme case, but a plausible one, nevertheless. Okay, this is a challenging question, everyone. Uh, type in your answers. Is it A, is illustrating the point that patients should be consulted about the desirability of a hospital stay? Is it specialist needs, need, specialists need, need to be informed for any mental health issues? Was that spoken about? Or C, relative, relative knowledge of a patient's condition shouldn't be taken for granted. Okay, we've got um, a few options coming in. Um, a got the least, less than 10%. Um, B is a, a around 15% and C has about 80%. Well, that's outstanding, everyone. You've done very well on this one. It's C, everyone. Well done. Give yourselves a clap, pat on the back. I thought this might be a little bit harder, but you've done great. And the answer comes from the last part. So we had to listen to quite a lot. Then we came to the final sentence or two, and they said, so this patient has cancer. And they said a feeding tube is inserted, a procedure which the patient complies with, but there's that word, but this is the third time now, but which is family's query. The doctor on duty updates them, assuming they're aware of the severity of the condition. When in fact, no such prognosis has been shared with them. So that means that the patient didn't tell his relatives of their diagnosis. Dr. Gardner acknowledges it's a bit, it's extreme and not common, but plausible, possible. Um, I have a question to the audience. I've underlined the word assume. Look at question C. Can you see the expression? Um, there's an expression there which means to assume something. See if you can tell me what the word assume means. Just got to jump between screens a little bit there. Type in if you think you know when they say assume, what's the expression? I'll wait for you to type it in. the answer choice C. Oh, 
I'll answer for you. I'm sure a couple of people are going to type it in at any moment. Um, but to assume something means to take it for, for granted. So people do things every day. So if you, it says, relatives knowledge of the patient's condition shouldn't be taken for a grant. It means shouldn't be assumed. So there's a direct synonym there, everyone. And it looks like you were able to um, pick up on that. Shouldn't be taken for granted. Shouldn't be assumed. So you can see the use of synonyms between the answer choices and the text. Well done, everyone. Let's go to question four. Dr. Gardner explains that a survey conducted among inpatients about communication. So some, what is he explaining about the survey? We're going to have to listen very carefully for this one. Same pattern, everyone. In order to find out exactly what inpatients felt about the service they were receiving in this hospital, we conducted a patient survey. The questions were carefully targeted to capture patients' opinions about the effectiveness of the communication they'd been involved in during their stay. The survey questioned patients on both what they had expected prior to admission and what their stay was really like. These two scores were then used to calculate what's called a gap score. The survey also included questions to measure the patient's behavioral intention, that is, how willing they would be to return to the hospital for treatment. Patients completed the survey themselves, and results were then processed with the help of medical students. Okay, one moment, everyone. We're just getting that poll set up. It's proving to be a little bit problematic, but it'll pop up in a moment. In the meantime, you can also just text in your answer. Okay, the poll's up live, everyone. A um, few people have typed it in, but put it on the poll as well, everyone. Put it in on the poll as well. That way we can measure everyone's response. Look and see a lot of people going for A. Well done. There's a couple of B's in there as well, but largely A. A is right, everyone. Well done. The answer is A. And when we analyze the language, measured the difference between their expectations and their actual experience, we can see that uh, if we look it up here, I'll bring it up with this. We can actually see the words... Uh, underlined, expected, and really like. So expectation, so that's our synonym, the noun expectation, right? And what this day was really like, their actual experience. So we can see those synonyms, and a lot of people got that right. Amara writes, as they were asked for what they expected versus what they experienced, exactly right. Um, and then it says these two scores were calculated. So it measured the difference. So question them on what they expected and what their stay was really like. And that's the difference between. Um, be wary of things like all aspects. I didn't talk about all aspects. I often worry about words like all. Um, that's a bit of a, sometimes these questions can be right. But I would say be cautious about question types that say all or everything. Um, listen carefully to decide if it's right. And nothing was mentioned about the frequency of their hospital visit. Okay, let's continue, everyone. Two more questions to go. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're getting a few right. Question five, one common complaint 
arising from Dr. Gardner's survey concerned. So we saw this one before, privacy, medical terminology, or respect. Have a listen. Now the survey produced some interesting data about communication, including both praise and complaints. Clearly in a hospital situation, staff are dealing with confidential and sensitive information, which must be communicated in private, a situation which can be difficult to achieve in a large and busy hospital. However, we scored highly on that point, and we were also pleased to note that staff did manage to communicate in a manner that treated patients with dignity and respect. Of course, staff also have to ensure patients fully understand what's been said to them. And this last point's where we received the most negative feedback. Both patients and relatives noted a tendency for professionals to resort to the use of jargon and complex terms when explaining both diagnoses and procedures, which left some patients confused. However, patients were generally satisfied with the information about any follow-up treatment provided after discharge. Okay, that's the end of question five. You can bring in your answers. If the poll's not working, just text them in. See how, see how we go. Okay, can we just get the... Uh... We'll just look at your text, everyone. Don't worry about the poll. Let's just see what you're typing in. So a lot of people are going for B, I can see at the moment. Keep typing in your answers, everyone. Don't worry about the poll, just type them in, everyone. One or two A's there. Okay, and the correct answer, everyone, is indeed B. Well done. Many of you chose B. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, it's Now, we had to listen clearly. Um, this one we could rule out. And, and tell me if you were able to rule out as you went along. And just let me pause for one sec, everyone. Just type in um, yes if you're able to keep up with this. Uh, can you hear me and see? Um, just refreshing this. Uh, now I've got your comments. Let's bring this up. Just dealing with a bit of technology here, everyone. Okay, got all those answers. Wow, a lot of you got that right. Well done, everyone. Looks like you're doing well on this task. Um, and uh, well done, Kiru. Kiru mentioned use of complex um, terms, and that's actually the synonym, isn't it? So they actually said there, um, let's have a look. So I found on this one we could do the rule out. Type in if you were able to do the rule out strategy, everyone, because it says here, Clearly, in a hospital situation, staff are dealing with confidential and sensitive information which must be communicated in private, a situation which can be difficult to achieve in a large and busy hospital. However, we scored highly on that point. So it was nothing about the sensitivity. Um, so you could rule out A. And we were also pleased to note that staff did manage to communicate in the manner that treated patients with dignity and respect. C says not to address patients in a respectful way. So it's the opposite. So this is one of the key strategies and I'm getting a lot of people typing yes, rule out as you listen. And obviously it's not really that hard if you're focused. 
Um, so we could rule out A and C, and then we came to B, and they said staff also have to ensure that patients fully understand what's being said to them. And this last point where we, we received the most negative feedback. So this negative feedback means common complaint. We had to read the question stem carefully. One common complaint. And then it goes on to say, both patients and relatives noted a tendency for professionals to resort to the use of jargon or complex terms when explaining both diagnoses and procedures, which left patients confused. So that was, uh, that was the finding. And I could say that in my experience as a patient, sometimes I've noticed an overuse of these words and found it hard. So it seems to reflect reality. How about you guys as health professionals? Are you clear when you talk to your patients or do you also tend to resort to jargon and complex terms. Okay, let's continue. Just a sec. For the last one, we're not gonna use the poll, everyone. We'll just get you to type in your answer. So question six, how does Dr. Gardner feel about the results of the survey? Let's do it. Remember, is he surprised, is he reassured, or is he worried? Let's find out. Also, once we'd sifted through all the results, a clear pattern began to emerge regarding the care given by nurses, which I found particularly interesting. I'd assumed that having a number of different nurses attending to a patient during their stay was a good thing because you need enough staff to cover the various shifts and attend to patients' needs. What I certainly hadn't expected, though, was for patients to say they felt their recovery was faster when they had to communicate with only a small number of nurses. In other words, when they were surrounded by familiar faces. The findings aren't conclusive, and more investigative work needs to be done on a bigger sample, but it's certainly food for thought. Okay, what do you think, everyone? We have a tough question, question six. A couple of people have gone early with B. I think they were trying to predict B there. We're getting some A's. Surprised by one response. A lot of A's coming through. Another B. A few B's coming through. No C's. Yeah, well, it's not C, so I'm glad no one chose C. It's either A or B, everyone. Uh, in fact, the answer is A. Now, why is it A? Well, let's have a look. It said, once we sifted through all the results, a clear pattern began to emerge regarding the care given by nurses, which I found particularly interesting. So interesting here is our synonym for surprising everyone. There's a bit of a clue. It's not reassured or worried. So he found particularly interesting. So why was it interesting? Because he'd assumed having a number of different nurses attending a patient was a good thing, right? But what he hadn't expected though, was patients felt their recovery was faster when they communicated only with a small number of nurses. So that was the surprise response. Um, and it doesn't really go on to say, well, no one went to see worried about unforeseen problems. They weren't really talking about unexpected problems. Um, and reassured by the level of patient care identified, no, well, actually, no, that was a surprise that the way the care was delivered uh, was not what the person had expected. Okay, 
All right, and that's the exam, everyone. How did you go? What was your score out of six? Yes, Mahama's written in what I certainly had not expected. Exactly, well spotted. So that's the listing for the key words. Um, so we have to listen. And that's why it's really good for you guys to study the transcripts after you practice as well. I highly recommend that. Uh, anytime if you do a listening task and you don't do as well as you would have liked or you got some questions wrong, spend time on the transcript, listen again and tune your ear, get used to that accent. Wow, so some people are getting four, some people are getting three out of six, a few people are getting fives, well done. I think four, if you're getting four, you're doing well. Um, there's a few ups and downs there, but three and four and five. Consider four a good target score. Um, and if you want to know everyone, this task I actually got, it's an OET Center task. It's from an OET Center book. Uh, that's where this one came from. I think it's a very good reflection of exam level. So if you practice, get used to it. Um, it's a nice exam. If you're focused, you can make those right choices. All right, any questions that you'd like to ask about listening? We're just focusing on listening today. So that's the topic of questions that I can help you with. Any questions that you might have about listening? While I'm waiting for questions to come in, um, I'll give you a couple little tips on how to improve your listening. Um, just try to listen to as many different accents as you can. I've flagged three of them, the UK, US and Australia, three common accents that you'll hear on this exam. Of course, there's, um, with UK, there's a few variations. Could be Irish or regional parts, maybe a soft Scottish accent, who knows? Nothing too difficult to grasp. Um, US, we could take in Canada, US and Canada accents, fairly similar. Australia and New Zealand also can be considered similar. So practice listening to medical programs is a good strategy. Um, I've got one here, 24 hours in emergency for um, UK viewers. I wonder if some of you have watched that. Um, it says showcasing Britain's busiest emergency department. So that's a good, exciting show. And also you can get the subtitles up to help you with that one. Uh, if you're li listening, um, if you want to hear a US-based accent, try TED Talks. TED Talks are excellent. And if you carefully select medicine as your subtopic, you'll get a whole lot of 20-minute lectures on medicine. Very, very useful. And the transcripts and subtitles are available. So use them to build your vocabulary and skill. Doing this regularly will make a big impact on your listening. And not to mention professional knowledge. Um, and then in Australia, you can listen to Catalyst. Um, Catalyst is a great program. Uh, it's all about science stories in Australia. Um, and there are transcripts available um, for review. And I know a lot of students who have found that they found one aspect of the exam hard and they really focus their study to build their vocabulary over a period of one or two or three months, whatever time frame you have, and they made tremendous progress. So building that vocabulary, getting used to um, these lecture style topics as well can be very, very useful. A few questions coming through. I'll just go through those questions. Um, next session, so I do these sessions every month. Mohan says, when's your next session? I do them every month. So I'll be back. Um, Mohammed says, tips for part A and listening. Well, part A is a um, health professional talking to a patient. So I would, the tip I would give for you there, 90%, if not 100, of answers come from what the patient says. So really focus on what the patient says for part A. And after trialing, really listen, um, look at the transcripts 
And you can actually see a pattern. Because one thing I'll tell you about part A, the um, page that you, you have to page you have to fill that's health professional notes so it's written in um, like a handover note style or professional note taking style and it summarizes it uses formal professional language but the patient speaks a bit more in colloquial language so you've got to identify the difference between colloquial language and formal language so build up your vocabulary of colloquial language language that the patient uses is a good strategy. Um, uh, set question coming from Mehan. Need more session about listening. Well, we have enrolled in one of our courses, Mehan, and we have regular sessions on listening. Um, every week we have a two hour session covering this. So that's something you can do. Um, Kin says, it's hard to read all questions in 90 seconds. Yeah, very hard. I, I think most people can't. So I just think a quick skim and scan and underline the keywords, Kin, and then the rest while you listen. Um, but building up your reading speed can help. Amara says, what if we get lost while listening during the exam? What's the best thing to do? Well, reading the question stems is what I advise so you can keep up with the communication. So go through some practice tasks and just make sure you've got that skill that you can follow through, because definitely not a good idea to get lost. So my response is, listen, read and listen at the same time. And that's a skill to develop as well. And that's why we use transcripts, everyone. So I would spend a lot of time reading and listening at the transcripts as well, because that, is a skill in itself. Get used to listening and reading at the same time. Allah says, um, you mentioned words like but, you should concern your answer afterwards. What else, please? Well, but, however, yet, although, things, because normally something important comes after that, Allah, or for that reason, or this is why, there's many, many signal words used in language. So again, analyze those transcripts and start to pick that out yourself. I think that's the best way to do it. Become self-aware of those words. Um, when we're confused with options, how can we select correct answer? Well, it's a bit of a lucky dip, isn't it? You've got three choices. I'd be trying to rule out the ones that you think are wrong and try to use your common sense, um, you know, your general knowledge even to pick the right one, your sense, but that's tricky. A bit lucky, um, but see how you go. Um, Chris says, how many listening practice tasks are on the online standard course? Uh, I think there's two full sets from memory there, Chris, for our online standard course. A um, few more questions. Someone saying, please share it. Yep, share this video, everyone. Hin says, tips for reading part C. We did that last week, last one. Hin says, go and check reading part C. I did that last week. That's prep hour eight. Look for the video on Facebook or visit our website where we've got that video loaded. Tips for part B, we might try to get to that, but we do cover that in our courses. Um, all right. Uh, Asma says, can we write notes in the answer sheet? Yes, you can. You can write notes as you go. And Nadja says, it's difficult to make notes. Yeah, practice is what I say. Practice, practice, practice to get good at it. That will be helpful. Um, and... Arandan says, when we're confused with two options, how can we select the correct answer? Well, if there was an easy answer to that one, that would be wonderful. But I guess it's about ruling out and listening and just being aware and, and lots of practice again to get used to it. There's no right or wrong. There's no like key word, this will be right or wrong. It's just listening and analyzing and trying to decide which is most logical. Now, look, quick, uh, just a quick um, bit about what we do. 
Uh, if any, is anyone in the audience from Brisbane or nearby Brisbane? If you are, just type in yes. Or is anyone going to take the exam in Brisbane? We've got some new courses going on now where we combine a face-to-face -face class in Brisbane plus our virtual classes online. If you are coming to Brisbane to take your test, you can pop in and do a one-week intensive before your exam. So check out that new option on the website. Uh, uh, if you're, I know many of you are all over the world. So um, we offer online classes at time zones for all regions. So make sure you check that out. Um, also a new innovation that we've done recently, writing's really hard, right? So, um, and now what we do is we, we've got three writing classes running every week plus a grammar class. So we have a very strong focus on writing and we cover all professions. Now we are the first center endorsed for medicine, for dentistry and physiotherapy, but we have great courses for all professions. So we run uh, writing classes just for doctors, writing classes just for nurses and writing classes, small size classes for the other professions. So if that's you, check it out. Um, results came out yesterday, uh, which was June, uh, whatever, June 6th. Um, results came out and a lot of our students have passed. So congratulations to those who passed. And if you are looking to do that yourself, um, we can help you prepare as well. All right, and that ends our session, everyone. So thank you very much for coming today. Visit our website, um, oetonline.net.au. We'll be happy to help you prepare for the exam. All right, wishing you good progress. Bye for now.